hello for everybody. My name is uh, Rai Curry, and I'm uh, I'm engineer from Skeleton Technologies, and we are, we are manufacturing best ultra capacitors in whole world. And somebody can say it's it's not true, but we are believing it is, and our customers are claiming the same. And uh, for uh, my background, I have been working in uh, five years in formal student teams and I were there a power electronics engineer and now I'm working as a sales engineer and also a system concept engineer in Skeleton Technologies. And uh, firstly, even Elon Musk says that sub supercapacitors are the future, not batteries. And uh, we are believing it's true also. In this case, we need to look carefully which application we can choose uh, supercapacitors. And uh, today's uh, present is uh, I try to give overview why are supercapacitors good, but not batteries. In some applications, there is no point to choose supercapacitors or batteries. So there is, there is very big differences. And I try to explain you only that if uh, that difference between batteries and supercapacitors. Uh, firstly, we need to look on the uh, power applications in uh, what is uh, difference between uh, lithium ion and supercapacitors or ultracapacitors. Actually, they are the same. Uh, the name is same. And um, what we can see here that ultracapacitors have uh, lots of specific power they have very deep discharge and uh, charge cycles. Ultracapacitors can last over one, one million cycles. And uh, of course, the charge rate, what is the most important in uh, ultracapacitors. So it's uh, 300 times more than lithium ion. But as you know, that uh, what is the worst thing about ultracapacitors is uh, energy density. And uh, our next slide is presenting very like highly this point. Uh, here we can see a normal battery. We can see here that the energy, what we have inside the uh, lithium ion or even the lead acid, it's enormous comparing with the ultra capacitor. But the main point here is charging power and discharging power. What in case of ultra capacitors is much, much more higher and uh, and that's that's the main difference and uh, you you need to know that in this case ultra capacitors can never be same as batteries and probably you never can just power your electrical vehicles only with ultra capacitors because you don't have just enough energy or in this case when you have you need to have lots of charging station for example china used that technology in some cities, they are charging the bus, uh, buses like every three kilometers or so, but it's uh, in some application that's not reasonable. But now we need to take a look where we can use the supercapacitors. Mostly there are two different categories. We are naming them cycling application and backup power uh, application. Firstly, we need to look on power applications. And the system need to be optimized by needed energy to keep uh, system running. And uh, in this kind of system, for the whole grid system, can pay 1 million euros or half a million euros. You can imagine that's, that's lots of money. And uh, they are only then effective when the system shutdown is very expensive. For example, some automated lines in industry, when they are shut down for one second, you can cost 100,000 euro. One shut down. So that's why uh, this system is very, very good for that kind of applications, but they are not containing lot, a lot of amount of energy. But uh, for example, that kind of application can be one megawatt power. And uh, you need to keep mention that, uh, that the only, only way is that the system shutdown need to be very, very expensive. For example, the grid application and uh, some industrial applications. But the other thing what is most common in the world is cycling applications. And they are optimized by minimum required energy for only three to, uh, let's say, three cycles. And the savings come from uh, recaptured energy mostly. And, uh, and, the, and the energy, maybe there are only like 
can be 20 supercapacitors on board or maybe 50 supercapacitors on board and one cycling can cost maybe only 10 cents or so but when we are looking uh, like the one year or 10 years application it can be saving more than 50 percent so in the both applications they are actually very very different applications and uh, parameters what we need to look on for example in cycling application we need to take a very closest look to low ESR what is internal resistance uh, when we are choosing very high internal resistance uh, supercapacitors we gonna lose any advantage and also with uh, thermal internal resistance when we gonna build some modules for this kind of buses what having very high thermal resistance uh, then we're gonna lose the total advantages and uh, I come back to this topic later but now uh, we're gonna I just see some you're gonna see some pictures also and today the biggest market cap is actually in here in excavators forklifts grain and crawlers uh, the every because in here you have a uh, higher number of cycles because workers work every day and uh, uh, excavators and cranes what are running today in supercapacitors they save fuel about 50 percent so you can imagine what what it mean and um, other uh, sector is transportation not by cars but just we are imagining to trucks and long hauls and city buses and uh, that's the that's the second biggest market cap and also the renewables and um, here is actually the most common system wind turbine pitching system as you know here is the blades and the blades need to be turned uh, when the wind is changing and uh, in some cases when you have uh, uh, creed is weakening or you don't have any more creed then you can't uh, twist the uh, blades anymore and you're gonna lose your wind turbine with seconds because you don't control anymore the speed and that's why supercapacitors are used to turn the plates like off and um, other thing is peak, uh, peak current supplies and then motorsports in motorsports uh, today's uh, three, three car companies have using supercapacitors and uh, for just recapturing the energy but start stop systems mostly all I can say that next three or four years mostly all cars gonna use supercapacitors to make start stop system because in lead acid batteries you're gonna take start sub, sub, stop system running maybe two months new cars absorbed or uh, new technology batteries you're gonna hold them running maybe two years maximum but with supercapacitors like uh, 15 years is no more problem and Mazda is using at the moment and Vaak group is gonna, gonna be used them also and but mostly they are also only I only like cycling applications because they are most cost effective and automotive industry is going to move at the moment to mild hybridization what mean they using a 48 volt system so at the moment market says that uh, also next five years all cars gonna have a 48 volt system not 12 or uh, or other other because it's the most cheapest and cost effective way how to build uh, hybridization and you're gonna save about 10 percent of uh, fuel and uh, you don't need to build new cars because it's it's very easy to use mild hybridization systems and um, now um, I want to show how actually this kind of systems work so probably this is most uh, something what interested you most and um, uh, please look this graph here and this uh, yellow line is presenting here the diesel engine uh, output power and this green here is presenting all power what the uh, excavator is using today but the same system uh, is run in excavator buses trucks ships trains and cars and there is there is two, two very uh, important points what we need to look um, we can see that uh, okay maybe you can see the not the numbers here but here is 200 kilowatts and uh, here is some 100 kilowatts and we can see that the uh, nominal power in diesel engine in this scenario is something about 100 kilowatts but the peak powers are 200 kilowatts so there is two times differences 
no uh, normal excavators what they're running today, they are the engine need to be 200 kilowatts, but the new excavator have only 100 kilowatts engine, so it's the twice a small engine, what is very good for fuel efficiency and also the wasted energy, and the all energy what we need to turn the excavator or run the excavator come from the supercapacitors. And other way, when we are breaking down this head of the uh, excavator, it's uh, flowing back to the supercapacitors. And this uh, constant uh, cycling uh, gives cycling uh, 50%. And this kind of technology is used today, and you can buy this excavator even in Estonia or whatever country, and three big companies are building that kind of systems. And uh, so th that's here the main point that they don't, only use it for breaking, but they they just cover the peaks. And in uh, when they have uh, energy overflow in engine, uh, like combustion engine, they charge the supercapacitors and then use peak powers. And uh, that, that's the that's the main thing that it's not only the case of breaking, but just cover the peaks in uh, in uh, area. And Normally, excavator buses and trucks, what can use these systems, the pay time is about uh, two, ye uh, two years or less. And the uh, lifetime of this system is 10 years, so it's uh, more than five times uh, it's going to be paid. And now for the engineers, mostly, uh, when you're going to use supercapacitors, uh, I don't know how many is knowing how it look like the uh, voltage drop versus energy, we need to look first in the lithium ion. And we know that when, when we are taking energy out from lithium ion batteries, uh, the voltage drop is uh, actually it's, it's quite minimal. And it doesn't affect any power electronic converters or characteristic of motors. But in case of supercapacitors, it's almost linear uh, behavior. So when you are taking out the energy, you're going to lose the voltage and you're going to lose it uh, very rapidly. So that's why the system concept need to be totally different as normally electrical cars or other, other kind of devices. Firstly, uh, here is presented the uh, most common solution in grid applications. We can uh, imagine that here is uh, power from the grid or power plant, and here is supercapacitor battery. And here is the, our machine uh, or motor or whatever device. And um, in these two boxes are presenting here a frequency converter with DC link or just two converters, AC to DC. And uh, why we have here DC DC converter is the same reason here, because when we are taking energy out from supercapacitors, we gonna lose the DC voltage here. And we, when we are don't using the DC DC converters, we gonna lose uh, DC voltage in DC link and it means that we're going to lose momentum or we're going to lose speed on the motors. So it's probably it's not possible. It actually, it is possible to use only capacitors there. But in this case, you're gonna, it's going to affect your machines very hardly. So that's why when you choose supercapacitors, you need to choose DC-DC converter. And um, down here, uh, we can see let's say the most common solution for electrical cars with the use uh, generators, batteries, and supercapacitors combined. And uh, down is also that between here is converter, but between batteries and generators don't have converters and they are common DC link and the converter made the uh, old, old work. And uh, that's presenting also that when you want to know the cost of the total system, you need to take account that you need DC DC converters. And um, other, other system, what is used uh, most widely today is actually generator and motor system. In, in, in this scenario, we can see that uh, it can save about 20% of energy, but this kind of combination can save about 50% of energy. The main point is here that diesel is uh, need to run running in very efficient area. And, um, even in, in this kind of application, it can be so that the diesel need to be running very high RPMs to achieve this high efficiency, but the gears don't need to run so fast. So in this scenario, the energy flows to, through generator, to inverter, back to motor, and divider, and back to gears, and it's more efficient than run it by shaft or gearboxes. And, uh, and when you have 
breaking energy, it's going to be charged in ultra capacitors and taken back. And uh, that application is used in heavy industry and that application is used mostly in uh, normal street cars or, or sport cars because it's much, much more lighter. But uh, in this scenario, it's using Toyota hybrid uh, systems today. And uh, yes, the main point is here that uh, supercapacitor batteries and generator motors uh, level voltage level don't match today. And do anybody have questions about applications? Because I, uh, I have very short time, so I try to give very fast overview about uh, how it's going to be used and uh, what is what is like what is need to be done and what is not. So nobody? Okay, I go, I go further. And um, to first, here is, uh, here is one par like some parameters about ultra capacitors and it's, it's only like, I don't know, here's 20 parameters, but there, there are, for ultra capacitors, you need to look on maybe 50 parameters or more to get a uh, good overview. And uh, you're gonna, when you're gonna see that kind of table, maybe it's a little bit confusing. And uh, when you're choosing, uh, supercapacitors for, for your application, then firstly need, you need to decide very hardly that gonna use in uh, energy storage systems or cyclic applications because you need to look very different parameters in that uh, two applications. Uh, when you're gonna use, for example, cyclic applications, you need to ter take care of uh, very low uh, thermal resistance, uh, very low ESR, but in case when you are using a holding the energy there in whole one year and just uh, hope that in one day when grids uh, falls down then you have uh, energy for 15 seconds to boost it up and in this case actually you don't uh, you don't care about uh, some parameters and uh, the mostly what you need to look the capacitance capacitance is uh, is something what gives you energy and also the voltage levels internal resistance is something what gives you power when you have very low ESR, you get lots of power. Even low ESR gives you actually a lifetime. When every, for example, when every uh, company claims that they have one million cycles, but when some uh, have two times less ESR, that actually means that they have even in some application five times more lifetime. So there is some hide uh, the values in data sheets, what you need to take care of. And um, it's also low ESR, what is internal resistance uh, means mean less heating. And normally, for example, in uh, buses, when you are choosing two times less ESR, in over the lifetime, you're going to save mo le more than 10% of energy. And um, other, other parameters, what you need to look is okay, power density and energy density. The most, let, when we are comparing with batteries, the energy density is most worst because it's more than 10 times less energy density than lithium ion today. But uh, as I said, that uh, supercapacitors gonna not win batteries in future. In definitely in five years, they are, they are not like no power to do it, but just in cyclic applications, as we have seen that they gonna save a lot of money. And for example, as I working in sales, I can say that all companies in Europe According, like, we can take Daimler, Bosch, Mercedes, Vakrup, uh, uh, BMW, everybody gonna use uh, uh, supercapacitors. And um, now we are talking a little bit about skeleton. Also, some, some um, topics we're gonna see here. Here is the Maxwell, who is actually the biggest market cap holder today. And here is skeleton technology products. And they have both same power, but our products are, let's say, two times uh, weight less than Maxwell do, and it's confirmed by Tire One, what is Audi Group uh, holders. And um, that's our ma main, main competitive advantage. advantage. And uh, we can hear that the power density versus uh, competitors, we have more than nine times mo more power in our supercapacitors than other in on the market. And um, here uh, we can see even the energy density. Our products have uh, lots of energy inside. It's come from mostly that we're gonna use our, our own carbon electrodes, what 
nobody else uh, can do. And that's, that's mostly our, our biggest competitive advantage, that we have much of po lots of power and we have lots of energy. Okay, um, uh, now I'm, now I'm uh, basically finished with my presentation and, uh, and uh, I want to just give like, yes, 10 minutes that we're gonna discuss this all topics. Because, yes, in, in, in this scenario, when I can give you a very correct overview, it takes hours and hours, but uh, maybe in these 10 minutes we can uh, solve all your like, problems and questions. And please. So, so thank you. Right. Uh, if s somebody has some questions, okay. Oh, thank you. Really interesting. Uh, how about the price between the Skeleton and Maxwell, the next competitor? Okay. Uh, Yes, uh, here, here we have uh, uh, our products families also and uh, our, our cylindrical ultra capacitors are let's say about 30% uh, more than Maxwell do. But uh, in these scenarios what our customers can use they win lifetime about 300% uh, so they, they, they have uh, this uh, price is like uh, good enough for that. But in this price, it's um, it's demand. I can say not the price, but it's it's very expensive. We are talking here that it's it can be ten times more expensive than others do. But uh, but mostly the prismatical cells. Uh, the main advantage is so that you can imagine when you back up cylindrical cells or you're gonna back up uh, prismatical cells, you're gonna save lots of volume because you don't have air gaps between the cylindrical cells and in some applications they don't have space to put their cylindrical cells because they lose about when you're building module uh, in cylindrical cells you're gonna double the volume uh, because the air gaps but in scenario with prismatical cells you need to multiply this volume all, only by 1.2 so it's very big difference that, that's why some somebody somebody need prismatical cells and they have money to pay it. For example, the space agencies who are our customers, like European space agencies, our customer, and they order only prismatical cells. Okay. If somebody has some questions, ultra capacitor topic. Uh, I have one. Uh, I see that you have also cylindrical ultra capacitor. Um, when I want to order this, uh, how long it takes time, uh, how, how fast you can produce this and how, how big your factory and this kind of questions. Uh, to, uh, we are, uh, at the moment we are producing uh, modules, prismatical cells and engine start modules okay. and uh, ultra capacitor factory we are building at the moment cylindrical cells okay. and uh, next summer uh, 2016 we're gonna relaunch this uh, product uh, factory and then uh -huh. one month you can order about 100,000 uh, wow. cells. Okay. And um, can you a little bit say how much this costs maybe one uh, this uh, ultra capacitor of 450 farad? So the biggest uh, biggest one uh, is um, there are there are this one is very very expensive because okay. the technology is what, what is used there is uh, it's uh, let's say it's not maybe everybody don't use it, but uh, the most competitive is like 3,000 farad, what is the most uh, common in the market. And it, uh, let's say, when you want to have like two pieces to test something, it you gonna be like 50 euros, but when you're gonna order then in large quantities, then 25. So okay, it's the, it's depend on how much you can order. Uh huh. And your main uh, factory uh, is somewhere in uh, Vimsi. Yes, uh, uh, Skeleton uh, itself is uh, our uh, main factory is located in Wiems in Tallinn. Uh, we have also factory in uh, Tartu. Mm -hmm. We have research center in uh, Helsinki and oh. also in Germany in Bautzen and the new factory what we're going to build for cylindrical cells in over two years is coming also in Germany. Okay. Uh, mm, somebody else have some questions? Maybe some... Uh, Technical things. Um. Hello. Oh, if somebody has some question, Hardy, maybe you have something. <laughs> you know these things uh, quite well. I know.
Well, I do not want to harass my colleague here. Just, but I can answer your questions as well if you have <laughs> anything. Probably, yeah, but let's take then in summary that um, yeah. please don't uh, like uh, choose that the uh, supercapacitor is going to run your car or bus like whole day long. It's it's not possible. So or it, when it's possible, you don't have enough money or whole country don't have so much money. But but uh, when you are thinking about cycling applications, they are very very beneficial. And as I mentioned, that all cars and buses going to run in ultra capacitors in future. And the project, all project is running at the moment, and uh, we are working together. And we are knowing that every every car, probably, and bus, what you can buy, it's run by ultra capacitors. Okay. Um, I think. Thank you. Right. Uh, okay. Big, big applause. I think. Yeah. It's. Um, I know that everybody is trying to do their own project, but uh, still, it's quite interesting topic and. Um, maybe in future you can think where you can use uh, this kind of new, quite quite uh, high level uh, capacitor, uh, yeah, elements. Okay, thank you.